Well, now for the next play from our powerful cycle of 12 from Dorothy L. Sayers about the life and death of Jesus. In this, the penultimate story, we hear the decision, or not, of Pontius Pilate and the inevitable crucifixion. King, a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, the eleventh play, King of Sorrows. When Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, had delivered Jesus unto the soldiers, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Get away, you disgusting urchin! Morning, worthy Shadrach. Coming to see these men turned off? They've got a fine day for it. Too hot. Turn to thunder presently. Oh, no, there's a lovely breeze. Glorious weather. It's good to be alive. You think so, Nicodemus? Ah, yes. When you're old and ailing, it's satisfactory to see strong young men being killed before their time. One likes to feel superior to somebody. Especially if somebody has been boasting that he's superior to death. Of course, we all fear death. It's very bumptious to pretend that death doesn't exist or doesn't matter. If Jesus thinks that, now's his chance to prove it. And wouldn't you be annoyed if he did? Now suppose he were to step down quietly from the cross and say, you can't kill me. I've broken the curse of Adam and banished death from the world. You'd be simply furious. You don't think there's any danger of that? Danger? No, I was only joking. Jesus will die and so will you. What a comfort that is, to be sure. Dear me, look at the crowd. Hmm. Romans as well as Jews. <laughs> Quite a popular event. Why are you surprised? You'd better be getting along. Oh, look, dear, there's Flavius. Oh, Flavius! Why, Phoebe! And the fair Calpurnia, too. But where are you both going? To see the execution. Will you join us, Flavius? Yes, but what's this? Has Claudia Procula given her ladies a homage? She <laughs> is sick. Pilate's wife sick, eh? Yes, she's troubled about the Jewish prophet. Oh? She sent us to see him and bring back word how he died. She's had bad dreams. Ah, she has looked upon Pan in the moonlight. You should keep her bedroom curtains drawn. The full moon is unhealthy when it shines on a dreamer's face. Is that true, Flavius? Perhaps. And I'll tell you something else. Yes? The panic terror is on Pilate, too. Ever since they said that Jesus claimed to be son of a god. Son of a god? Come this way with me, ladies. There should be some novelty about crucifying a god. <laughs> Mother of Jesus, are you determined to go on? To the gallows foot, John Barzebedee. Speak to her, Mary, sister of Lazarus. Tell her she should not come. Dear Mother Mary, spare yourself. John is a man and I... I have lived in the world and seen many bad things, but for you it is different. Yes, Mary Magdalene, it is different. All of you are his friends, but I am the mother who bore him. Look, far down the road there is a little cloud of dust. Who will come up this flinty path to the scaffold? My master. My beloved. My child. When he was small, I washed and fed him. I dressed him in his little garments and combed the rings of his hair. When he cried, I comforted him. 
And when he was hurt, I kissed away the pain. And when darkness fell, I sang him to sleep. Soon now, he will come fainting and fasting in the dust. His hair tangled with thorns. They will strip him naked to this sun and hammer the nails into his living flesh and the great darkness will cover him. And there is nothing I can do. Nothing at all. This is the worst thing. To conceive beauty in your heart and bring it forth into the world and then to stand by helpless and watch it suffer. Mary, Mother of Jesus, be brave. They are coming near. I shall not give way, John Barzebedee. And you, Mary of Magdala, prepare yourself. Yes, John. The crowd will soon be thick upon us. Let us move a little out of the way. And from here, we can gaze on the two robbers who precede our master on the road to Calvary. Can anyone tell me... Who are the two robbers that are to die with him? You want their names? I'll tell you. That Dismas and Jestas. Dismas and Jestas. Not condemned for robbery, but for sedition against Rome. Just as this Jesus who follows them is not condemned for blasphemy, but for sedition against Rome. The wise fools of the Sanhedrin have made themselves the cat's paws of Caesar. Stranger, who are you who would speak so rashly? Come over here. I want to tell you something. I think I recognize you. Are you not Baruch the Zealot? And are not Dismas and Jesters two of your men? Lock those thoughts in your heart and throw away the key. Look now. Here they come. And each man staggering beneath the weight of the bloody Roman cross. A fine burden for a Jewish back. Each man labelled with his name and the name of his offence. Read the titles. Jestas. Robber and rebel. Rebel against who? Against Tyrephus? No! Take that, you dirty thief! Oh. Hurry! Kill him on the man! Hell no! seize you! The devil burn you! If I could lay hands on you! Get on, fellow! Then knock my blasted teeth out! You won't need teeth where you're going. Now move on with you! Go on, Jesus. Give it a back. Use your mouth to spit with. Look again. Gizman, robber and rebel. Hey, Gizmas, you old cattle thief. Stealing again? What are you carrying there? A wooden horse. With one leg. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you poor fool? The horse should be carrying you, not you, the horse. <laughs> I'll mount me horse at the roads in, Cully. I look down on the ruddy lot of you. Oh, oh this fella's a wag. I like him, plucky. <laughs> now then, you, stir your stumps or you'll taste this whip. Drive on, coachman. And to hell with Caesar. You shut your mouth, fella. I say to hell with Caesar. I'm a dead man, ain't I? I say what I like. Down with dirty old Tiberius and his rotten empire! Whips there! Whips! Oh, oh, get out there! Oh, oh, God save jury, for only the dead can speak freely. Here comes the master criminal, with all his sins on his head. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Do you relish the jest, good people? It's a damned insult. What can Jews expect but insult? Poor soul, how white he is. He can hardly stagger along. Give me a man who can laugh on the way to Jebet. He's stumbling. He's going to fall. Get on there. Can't you get that man on faster? You'll try if you like, Centurion. But he's been down once already. Come on now, put your back into it. He's shaking his head, poor thing. To get the sweat out of his eyes. Get on with you, be a man! Hold your tongue, shrieking paradigm. You don't know a man when you see one. Bear the unbearable. To go on when the thing is impossible, that's courage. Hosanna, son of man. Hosanna. No, Mary, mother of Jesus, Let no. Let me go to him, John. Jesus. Jesus, my son. He didn't answer you. 
He didn't look at you. He cannot. He is moving on. He is walking blind. If he turned his head, he would fall again. We have no need of words, my son and I. I never thought he could look like that. The whole face that was the beauty of Israel. Where are the lips that laughed away our sorrow? Where is the voice that called back Lazarus from the grave? Kneel down, kneel down with me, throw dust upon your heads, for the light of the world is gone out. Come, Mary, sister of Lazarus. Are you not ashamed to stand upright when my lord of love is brought so low? Where is your heart, John Barzebedee? My heart is dead. It died last night in the garden. I can feel nothing. Rise up, Mary of Magdala. We must be strong for his sake. Oh, cruel, cruel, cruel. Is there no grace in Israel? No hand to help, no heart to pity. Yes, there is one. Look. The poor woman has stepped forward with a handkerchief and wiped the sweat from his forehead. Oh, that was kindly done. I must speak to her. Madam, I am his mother. I thank you. It will be remembered in the kingdom. Come on, come on! What's the matter now? Prisoners down again, Centurion. Oh, let's stand still and get him on his legs again. Nothing doing. He's all in. Let's publish it, right? I think we flogged him too hard. Yeah. No, he's coming round. Well, that's a mercy. If he died on our hands, we'd be for it. Law says he must be crucified alive. Poor devil. And a wicked law it is. Roman law. Bloody and cruel. There was no such law in Israel before the Romans came. Quiet there! I've seen enough of your law in Africa. I come back home to keep Passover, and here it is, defiling the very feast. That'll do, my man. You Jews, you'll stone and burn and strangle, but that doesn't shed blood, so you call it civilized. Can he walk now? No, wait a minute. Steady, steady, give him a hand. Oh, he can't see where he's going. What's he groping about for? He's stretching out his hands for the cross. Well, I'll be... But he'll never carry it. We'll have to find somebody, somebody with a hefty pair of shoulders. Here, where's that fellow that was bawling so loud? Yes, you! What's your name? Simon. I come from Cyrene. Well, lay hold of this and carry it, see? I'll see you damned first. By the time you've lugged it up the hill, you'll have no breath left for bawling. I came here to keep the pot. Come on now, no back chat. Yes. All right. I will carry it for him. <gasps> Feel the weight of this. Oh! Now then, prisoner. We've taken the weight off you. On. Up the hill. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the robbers one on the right hand and the other on the left. Oh, well, that's two of them. This Jestas is a sturdy rogue. We had to break his fingers to make him open his fists. Yes, he put up a stiff fight. You'll have a black eye, Corvus. Now he'll ache for it. I strung him out tight as a bowstring. Oh, come on, let's have the last of the three. Oh, oh. You got him stripped? Oh. Yes. Yeah, you are. This one won't give to I don't know about that. Oh. He wouldn't oh. drink the myrrh and vinegar. Oh. Oh. Why not? Said he wanted to keep his head clear. Oh, if he thinks he can make a oh, getaway. he's only crazy. Oh. Here, my lad, don't be obstinate. Drink it. No. It'll deaden you like. You won't feel so much. No, no. Well, if you won't, you won't. You're a queer one, ain't you? Come on, then. Let's get down to it. All right. Kick oh. his feet from under him. There's no need. He's down. Now, take the feet, Corvus. Right. Stretch your legs. 
I'll give you king of the Jews. And me the mallet. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. <gasps> My lord Caiaphas, mm -hmm. speaking to you now as high priest of Israel, is your mind at ease about this matter? Why not, Joseph of Arimathea? Oh, I will not argue with you about the person of Jesus. His attitude at his trial, though, before our Sanhedrin has shaken me. I was ready to believe him a great teacher, a great prophet, perhaps the Messiah, but now he has claimed to be the Son of God. That is either an appalling blasphemy or else a truth so appalling that it will not bear thinking about. Are you saying that it might be truth? I dare not. For in that case, what have we done? We have conspired in some unimaginable manner to judge and murder God. Just so you've only to state the case to expose its absurdity, so what have you to object to? Not the deed so much as the manner of it. Was it necessary, most venerable, to lick the feet of Rome in public? Admit the sovereignty of Caesar? In my opinion, there is but one way with Rome, to slam the door against her. But let her squeeze in so much as a finger, and she will follow with the whole arm, till jury is no longer jury. Joseph of Arimathea, let me tell you something. Yes, my lord. Jury has gone. Forever, the day of small nations is past. This is the age of empire. Consider, all through our history, we've tried to slam that door. Jury was to be a garden enclosed, a chosen race, a peculiar people. But the door was opened by whom? In the strife between the sons of Alexander, you mean? Precisely. That strife brought us Herod the Great, the creature of Rome, who for thirty years held jury together in his gauntlet of iron. And when he died, what? The partition of Israel into three tributary provinces with Pontius Pilate the Roman made governor of Judea. With every Jewish quarrel, Rome takes another stride. But Jesus has no political... I have killed this Jesus, but for one pretender crucified, 50 will arise. One day the zealots will revolt and the sword will be drawn against Caesar. Then the ring of fire and steel will close about Jerusalem. Then the dead will lie thick in our streets and the tramp of the legions will be heard in the inner sanctuary of our temple. I, Caiaphas, prophesied. Strange. You echo the prophecies of Jesus. But he, I think, would have enlarged the boundaries of Israel to take in all the world. They shall come, he said, from east and west and sit down in the kingdom of God. Jews, Romans, Greeks, he received them all. Is it possible that he saw what you see, Caiaphas, and would have chosen to fling the door wide open, not to exclude, but to include? Not to lose Israel in Rome, but to bring Rome into the fold of Israel. If so, he must have been mad to imagine. <laughs> yes, but the duty of statesmen is to destroy the madness which we call imagination. It is dangerous, it breeds dissension. Peace, order, security. That is Rome's offer, at Rome's price. We have rejected the way of Jesus. I suppose we must now take yours, Caiaphas. You will reject me too, I think. Be content, Jesus, my enemy. Caiaphas also will have lived in vain. Who was kind to this 
destroy the temple and build it in three days. Don't build there the temple will see you out. Come to that, why don't you destroy the cross? Split the wood, melt the iron. That's nothing to a fellow who can overthrow the temple. Show us your power, Jesus of Nazareth. Show us a miracle. Is it nothing to you or you that pass by? What has he done to you that you should treat him like this? He said he was the Messiah! King of Israel! Son of David! Greater than Solomon! Does Israel get her kings from the carpenter's shop? Or out of the common jail? Will you reign from the Jimmy into the Jews? He would have made you citizens of the kingdom of God, and you have given him a crown of thorns. Where are all his mighty works now? He saved others, but he can't save himself! He gave power to your hands and strength to your feet, and you have nailed his hands and feet to the cross. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty, Jesus of Nazareth? Where's the water you talked about? Where's the never-failing bread? He fed you with the bread of heaven and the water of life, and you have given him vinegar to drink. John, can't we get closer? It will be some comfort to him to have us near. I don't know if the soldiers will let us through, but we can ask them. Pass along there. Pass along, please. Now then, my man, stand back. You can't come any closer. Pray, good centurion, let us pass. We are friends of Jesus of Nazareth. And you best steer clear of trouble and take these women away. It's no place for them. Sir, I am his mother. I implore you, let me go to him. I'm sorry, ma'am. Can't be done. Uh, you just go home quietly. Centurion, do you know me? No, my girl, never saw you in my life. Has grief so changed my face? Look again, Centurion. Is there another woman in Jerusalem with red hair like mine? Mary of Magdalene. Oh, my soldiers will remember you. Where have you been all this time, Magdalene? By the feet that danced for your soldiers. By the voice that sang for your men. By, by the beauty that delighted you. Centurion, let me pass. Beauty? That's for living men. What's this dying gallows bird to you? He is my life. And you have killed him. All right, Mary. Let her through, lads. And the mother and the friend. And that'll do. No more. She's back right there. Move along now. Move along. Now, well, before you go any closer, I want to tell you something. I'm a centurion attached for special duties here in Jerusalem during the feast. I come from Capernaum. And it's my job to see that the followers of Jesus don't make a disturbance. Why are you telling us this, centurion? My name's Proclus, and I know the man. You know Jesus of Nazareth? You know my son? Yes, he was very good to me. He cured my servant. But duty's duty. I've had 40 years in the service. I was seconded to King Herod's guards for seven years. Had 15 years active service in Germany. Remained on as a veteran. Ten years regionary in Galilee. So you'll understand. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Pablis? The prisoner's clothes, Centurion. Oh, yes. They're your perquisite. Well, take them and share them out evenly. Yes, Centurion. Come over here, Corvus, huh? and you others. Right. We're to share them evenly. Three pairs of sandals. Who wants a cloak? Ah, me. me. You can't uh, both have well, it. Well, yeah. Ah, yeah. then don't grab. 50-50. Is this my share, this filthy piece of rag? Hey, just as you mean, thief! Why didn't you put on something decent? Man, it's not your flesh, Roman dog! <laughs> <laughs> I wish it were steeped in vitriol! Curse these filthy flies! Ah, temper, temper! Ah, <laughs> here's a nice bit of stuff. Nazarene came from a good home. Fair shares. Yeah, fair shares. Yeah, wait a bit. It's a shame to tear it up. This is a lovely piece of wool, and woven right through without a seam. Well, a task for it, then. Anybody got a dice? Uh, here you are. Ah, luck, Lady Venus. Oh, ladies, I've thrown the dog. Here, Publius, come on over here. It's your turn. Jesus, my son, I am here. Mary, the mother who loves you. The pain is sore, my darling. But it will pass. Jesus, Rabboni, I am here. Mary, the sinner who loves you. 
kneeling below the feet that I once washed with my tears. Jesus, my Lord, I am here. John Bar Zebedee, a friend who loves you. He ran away from you, Master. And the places on your right hand and on your left have been given to these two thieves. All you dung blast, you the three of you! Ain't hell's fiends bad enough without all that caterwauling? Yeah. Jesus, tell him you shut up, you hear? Oh, Justice, leave him be. Oh. There's no harm in him. It was me was asking for it. Broke the Lord, got what was coming to us. But this poor blighter in the middle ain't done nothing. Oh. You're all right, Jesus, ain't you? Of course you are. This is just a bad dream. One of these days you'll come out in a cloud of glory and astonish him all. There. He's smiling. He likes being talked to that way. Jesus, you'll remember me, won't you? When you come into your kingdom. Indeed. And indeed, I tell you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Uh, don't look at me like that. I've been bad, bad all through. You don't know how bad. Yes, you do. You know everything. Near Jordan, I was born. Near Jordan. And the water cooled to the feet. It's a long way. But you won't leave me. Stay with us on the cross. Go on looking at me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's selfish. Keeping you upright like red hot princes in your neck. Give me the pain. It's you that's bearing mine somehow. Oh, I'm all muddled. And the water is cool. Um, what's the time, Flavius? It must be close on noon. How long does it take as a rule? Sometimes they linger on for three days. Your man won't last so long. Three hours, more likely. The god will die, then? The god is dying. He has the marks upon him. The pinched nostrils and hollow face, sunken about the temple, and the skin dry and dusky like parchment. But the bodies have to be off the cross before sundown, you know. Why? Because of the Jewish Sabbath or something. So if they're not dead by then, they put them out. I can't see properly. It's coming over very dark. The colour's gone out of everything. It reminds me of the day of the Great Eclipse. It's a sort of light, I think. Perhaps the gods are angry after all. Hadn't we better get home? We've seen all there is to see, and even the soldiers over there are looking at the sky. Watch happening, you the weather. Scarcely see the pips on the dice. Yeah, better chuck the game. How much longer are we going to stick here? I'm getting damned hungry. What's it going to do? Rain? Oh, I wish it would. Stifling hot. I hate this beastly climate. <laughs> well, better down here than up there. <laughs> Taking the kick out of jesters, even. Is the Nazarene dead? Going home fast, I fancy. I wish the relief had come. John. John, is it the darkness? Or is there a change in his face? Yes, Mary. There is a change. My son is dying. The whole world is dying. He's going out into the night and has taken the sunlight with him. Uh, Hush, he's trying to speak. Mother. Yes, dear. Let John be a son to you now. 
John, she is your mother. Yes, Master. I will take care of her, I promise. And I will love him as though he were my own. Oh. He is dying. I could not believe it. But he is dying. Oh. It grows darker and darker. All the people are drifting away. Soon there will be only the soldiers and ourselves. And there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, What was that? It was the Nazarene. I thought he was dead. No, not yet, Centurion. What did he say? Oh, I don't know. He spoke Hebrew. I think I know. He called on Elias for help. Elias? He's a national hero or, or demigod of some kind, I think. Ask the young man over there. He's a Jew. Good idea. Young man, what did your master say? He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What horror could wring that cry out of him? He was always one with God. If there was anything I could do, uh, consistent with my duty, that is. I thirst. Have we got any water? Uh, there's some vinegar here in the jug, Centurion. Well, that's better still. Dip a cloth in it and hold it up to his mouth. Yes, Centurion. I, uh, I can't reach so far. Oh, put it on the end of your spear. Uh. It's so dark I can hardly see his face. Is he taking it? I can't tell. I think he's going to. Yes, Centurion. He has received the vinegar. He's trying to say something. It is accomplished. Father into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the earth did quake, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion and they that were with him saw this, they were afraid. Centurion. Sir? For whom are these gallows erected? Why, don't you know? I see by your complexion you're a foreigner. And two of the men are robbers. And the one in the middle is Jesus of Nazareth, whom they called the King of the Jews. Jesus, King of the Jews. Then the stars have led me aright. And I have found him as my dream foretold by the tall tree on the hill. I think I recognize you, Centurion, though it is thirty years and more since we met. Indeed, sir? Where was that? At the court of King Herod. I remember. You are Balthazar, king of Ethiopia. I am. And there on that tree is the child that was born to be king, at whose coming the great star shone. Is that he? Herod told me to slay him, and I refused. But you see, they have killed him at last, and here I stand. Son of God, he called himself. And so I believe he was. Excuse me, Centurion. Hmm? Yes? A Jew called Joseph of Arimathea is here with an order from the Roman governor. He's to have the body of the Nazarene for burial. Oh, yes, quite right. I'll come. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You are Joseph of Arimathea, I take it. I am. 
Very good. You come this way. No, go away. Don't touch him. We're going to take his body down from the cross, and this gentleman will see him properly buried. But he is not dead, Jesus. Lord, Master, speak again. Tell them you are alive. Mary, my little Mary. <laughs> Are you sure he's dead, you men? No, he's dead enough, Centurion. But a spear thrust will make sure. There! No! What did you want to go and do that for? What have you done? He is living. See how the blood runs down. Oh, no, my poor. <laughs> no, if he were living, the blood would leap. This creeps dark and sluggish, clotting as it falls. No, he broke his heart, I think, in that last cry. Excuse me, ma'am, but we must do our job. Can you do anything with her? Mary of Magdala, come. my dear, come to me. There, there, there. You will handle my son gently, Centurion. We will, ma'am. You're a brave woman. Bring a ladder. All right, yours, sir. Mary, don't watch them taking him down. Listen to me. Let me tell you a thing that he once said to us. Are you listening? Yes, John. He said, the son of man is only a weekend guest in the house of death. On the third day he will rise and go. Third day? Did he say that indeed? Yes, Joseph of Arimathea, he did. But I do not know exactly what he meant. Careful, men, careful. careful. Yeah, now lower him by the knees and show him. Uh, oh, we got it. Got it? Yes, yes. You got that winding sheet ready? Yes, sir. Give me my son into my arms. Here you are, man. Hail, Mary, Mother of God. I know you. You are King Balthazar. I am. These are the baby hands that closed upon your gift of myrrh. This is the fair young head, crowned once with gold by Melchior, but now with thorns to be a king of sorrows. The third gift, Caspar's gift, is yet to come. What was that third gift, Mother? Frankincense. <laughs> my husband. What is it, Claudia? Claudia, tell me, what's the matter? Oh, I've had a dream of such terror. Tell me your dream. I was in a ship at sea, voyaging among the islands of the Aegean. At first the weather seemed calm and sunny, but presently the sky darkened, and the sea began to toss with the wind. And then, out of the east, there came a cry, strange and piercing. And I said to the captain, what do they cry? And he answered, Pan Homegas Tefneki. Great Pan is dead. And I asked him, how can God die? And he answered, don't you remember? They crucified him. Then all the people in the ship turned their faces to me and said, Pontius Pilate. Your name has been... Your name continually. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. May the gods avert the omen. This day is like my dream. This darkness at mid-noon. Hark. What is that? Nothing, Claudia. There is nothing to hear. Your Excellency. Well, Flavius. The High Priest Caiaphas is here. Yes, Caiaphas, what is it now? Excellency, that lying charlatan, Jesus of Nazareth... I want to hear nothing more about Jesus of Nazareth. Something has just come to our knowledge. During his lifetime, it seems, he boasted that if he were killed, he would rise again on the third day. It is surely advisable that his tomb should be carefully guarded. Otherwise, some of his followers may steal the body and give out that he has risen from the dead, thus starting a new superstition infinitely more damaging than the first. 
Well? I suggest that you order sentries to be posted. It has nothing to do with me. The bodies of criminals are Roman property. A member of your Sanadrim applied to me for the custody of this particular body. A member of the Sanadrim? Yes, and I was happy to oblige him. The thing has now become a Jewish affair. Rome is not concerned. Excellent. You have your own guards. Do what you will. Set a watch. Seal the stone and make the sepulchre sure. King of Sorrows was the eleventh of a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, the man born to be king. King of Sorrows, the 11th play from the cycle of 12 by Dorothy L. Sayers, you heard John Westbrook as Jesus, with Gabriel Wolfe, Heron Carvick, Francis de Wolfe, Malcolm Hayes, John Wise, Howison Colfe, Trader Faulkner, Alec Clunes, Caroline Monkhouse, Penelope Lee, June Tobin, Mary Wimbush, John Laurie, Russell Napier, Rodney Dyack, Trevor Martin, Bruce Beebe, Harvey Hall, John Baker, Paul Danqua, and Mary Law. It was dramatised and produced by Raymond Rakes. And the final play in the cycle is tomorrow.